you for joining us for today's talk uh, regarding award-winning ASO strategies and how we 5x B&Q's app growth. Um, just a little bit about us. I'm Rishan. I'm a growth director here at Yodo. I have been doing ASO since about 2013. So that's around the time the iPhone 5S launched, which kind of feels like a lifetime ago at this point. But um, during this time, I've learned a lot of things, some of which I'll share with you guys today. And um, I've had the joy of being able to work on a lot of different apps across a wide range of verticals and helping them achieve sustainable app growth. And uh, that includes the wonderful guys here at b &Q. Ah, it's too kind. Hi, everyone. I'm Harry Blameyer, wet for b &Q. Um, I'm the uh, CX content and design manager um, for uh, b &Q Digital. Apps is a bit of a side hustle for me. Um, uh, so uh, we, what we've lent on extremely hard is Yoda Mobile's expertise in this space. Uh, and we've been able to deliver some really fantastic growth, which we're going to talk to you about today. Fantastic. So um, while we're here today, um, Firstly, we'll talk about some frameworks that we have established at Yodel, including the ASO 360 framework, and its holistic impact on ASO and the app and its business. Um, we'll also talk about b &Q's challenges and the strategies that we've deployed for app growth, as well as the measurable results that we've seen. And at the end, hopefully, we'll have some time for Q&A so you can ask Harry some really difficult questions. <laughs> Cool. Uh, just to start a little bit about Yodo, we are a growth marketing agency. We offer a wide range of services spanning across ASO, growth, consultancy, um, user acquisition, and best-in-class mobile creative production. We've worked across thousands of apps, and we've helped to launch and scale them. Um, we work globally across a wide range of categories. And um, we're really keen on building strategies that deliver results. And um, that includes also uh, some awards that we won last year for ASO Agency, as well as uh, App Growth Team of the Year the year before that. When it comes to apps, what we are really interested about uh, is getting businesses into the app growth mindset. Um, and that's essentially working with marketing, product, and commercial functions and aligning them cohesively so that uh, they deliver efficient and effective results when it comes to marketing efforts. Um, so oftentimes, we actually end up becoming an extension of their in-house marketing teams. So just to give you a little bit of uh, um, insight on B&Q, in case you didn't already know, um, so B&Q is the UK's largest home improvement retailer. Uh, we've got 314 shops across the UK and the Republic of Ireland. Um, on our website, we sell over 40,000 1P products, so our, our own brands and also really recognized DIY brands. And then uh, if you've been following the news recently, you would have seen that we just launched our online marketplace uh, to really uh, compete with Brands like Mano Mano and Wayfair, um, who who've kind of like really edged their market share into home improvement, so we're trying to claw some of that back. Um, got loads of employees um, across the UK and Ireland, as I said, um, and we are trying to become a more digital first business. So we're very bricks and mortar, as you can imagine. Uh, pardon the pun, um, but. Um, our group CEO uh, for Kingfisher, Thierry Garnier, has a vision of us becoming a very service-oriented, mobile-first experience um, as a retailer. Uh, so that's why we're investing much more effort and interest into, into our apps and into mobile. Great. Um, I guess before we get into it, can I get a quick show of hands in terms of who's done ASO before in this room? Awesome, almost everyone. And who's new to ASO and is just interested in finding out amazing stuff? You guys? Fantastic, awesome. Um, so one of the frameworks that we've developed at Yodel is the Infinite App Growth Loop. Essentially, what we've got are two areas, acquiring users and maximizing the value. And as usual, you, you start off by acquiring users, and that can come in many forms, paid acquisition, organic influence, and so on. Um, once you get them, they always end up in the App Store, that's your bottleneck, and you want to try and compel those users. They then go into becoming activated, you, the, it's the first onboarding journey, they learn about the app, they register in most cases, and then you want to try and retain them through marketing automation, for example, so sending push in-app emails to try and get them to re-engage with the product. And hopefully, they'll also end up leaving some positive ratings and reviews on the App Stores. All the while, I guess for every business, the key is to convert them to some sort of monetization goal. Um, and then ultimately, if, if they become advocates of the brand, they'll hopefully share that with their friends and family. And that sort of drives the viral loop, uh, in effect. 
Um, when it comes to ASO, though, we like to think of it as a bit more of a 360 piece rather than just being point two. And the idea here is that ASO actually feeds into multiple areas within this user journey. So what's the real impact of ASO? If we start off with acquisition, um, the no-brainer here is organic acquisition with ASO. You're um, utilizing keywords, you're optimizing keywords to drive visibility in the app stores. You're trying to rank for high visibility keywords that are driving volume and downloads, hopefully. Um, it helps with brand defense. Uh, it's, it's certainly the, one of the key levers for organic acquisition. And there are multiple ways of going about it. You could be doing things like performance audits. You could be leveraging multiple channels um, to do comprehensive research. And you, could, or you should also be looking at utilizing bespoke methodologies to do your metadata optimizations uh, on a specific cadence. Um, what we've got is a keyword optimization loop, which I'll come into in more detail in a few slides' time. Um, but the next stage is obviously the compel, the compel stage, where they are now in the App Store listing, uh, they're, they're on your page, and you want to try and drive that download. Uh, and that's where conversion rate optimization comes in handy. You want to try and use the elements that you've got at your disposal to maximize that conversion rate to download. Um, obviously, you've got your screenshots, you've got your videos, and your icons, um, Google Play Store offers native A-B testing. Apple with iOS 15 has introduced product page optimizations and custom product pages. Um, and there are also a bunch of third-party solutions on, in, in the space for you to try and, uh, and run A-B testing. Um, hopefully, at this point, I've not lost anyone. This is fairly straightforward. Um, but where it gets interesting, though, is when we start to look at um, once the user is inside the app. Here we've got the onboarding stage. And essentially, what we're trying to do is build a really cohesive user journey from the second they see an ad to the first time they enter the app. Uh, and the app store sort of sits in the middle and helps to facilitate that. Um, the ASO teams would be well placed to make sure that the messaging is consistent um, and to really ensure that there is a, um, a, a very cohesive messaging story throughout. Um, we've got an example here where there's an offer when the user clicks on an ad. Um, they go to the App Store, there's always going to be is, um, a consistent brand tone of voice and as well as a brand design language. And then once they enter the app, uh, they see the same offer again. Uh, and this is just a, a way of how ASO can help support the acquisition teams, for example, and the product, product teams to make sure that those acquisitions that they're driving are of highest quality. Um, at the feedback collection stage, I, I guess this was also, I mean, the reason users download high-quality apps. It's the same reason we go to restaurants that are positively reviewed. We have a tendency to listen to others, and, and we like to trust other people's opinions. And this is why a feedback management strategy is key to maximizing five-star ratings and reviews, whilst minimizing your negative ratings and reviews. Um, what we've got here is an example of a client. They um, actually did pretty well on, uh, on iOS, but on Android, they were seeing 3.7 stars. Um, and um, when, we, when the ASO team actually dug deeper into the ratings and reviews, they were able to identify uh, that there was an issue in October with one of the updates. Um, there was a vast majority of reviews left that were negative. Uh, we analyzed those reviews, fed that back to the product teams, and then they were able to make optimizations to the product, which then led to the subsequent app updates driving more positive reviews afterwards. So again, a great example of how your ASO team can help product optimize it. And, and of course, as you improve your ratings, that will also have an impact on your conversion rates and as a result, installs. Um, lastly, you've got uh, convert. And this is one of the key ones. And I think, in general, the idea is that you bring users to your App Store listing, they'll download. The, and then it's sort of handed over to the product team to try and get them to convert the user or monetize them in some shape or form. But there's actually levers now in place for users to for ASO um, team members to leverage features within Apple, for example, such as promotional in-app purchases, to drive that monetization part. Uh, essentially, you've got your own card, and um, it's got its own bit of metadata, and you can use that to your advantage because that those pieces are indexed by the algorithm. So you can maximize your visibility. You can also increase your keyword rankings. And hopefully, those cards will allow you to deliver more downloads and directly purchases for your app. So I guess as a whole, the aim is to take a 360 approach to leverage the power of the app stores. ASO, and you would have heard this uh, on some of the other talks today, ASO should not sit in silos. 
uh, it should be part of an integrated system and feed into different parts of the business. So how we 5x b and Q's growth? You can ask me. Okay. <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks, Rish. Um, cool. So Rish has talked to you through like the theory behind it and, and Yodel Mobile's approach to ASO. And so this is how we put it into practice within B and Q. So up until the beginning of uh, 2021, um, not all areas of B&Q's digital portfolio had been taken care of, it hadn't been looked after. So um, that's because there were other kind of more uh, pressing, urgent issues to fix, things like supply chain logistics. So App always got kind of pushed to the bottom of the queue in terms of development uh, and improving the product. Um, so consequently, at the beginning of 2021, our, our total percentage of digital sales that we were driving through the app was just a mere 3%. Um, but as a team, what we noticed during the pandemic was a sudden shift of, of users moving away from mobile, moving away from desktop and into the app. Um, it was kind of brought about by the fact that uh, during the pandemic, we, as you, as you know, BNQ was one of the only retailers that was that was out there and that was still able to trade during lockdown. Uh, and it meant um, that loads of people were hitting our website. We had to throttle the traffic somehow, so we put in a queuing system onto the website. Um, uh, but what we couldn't do is put that same queuing system on the app. And so all the savvy customers who wanted to dodge waiting six hours to get onto DIY.com uh, were shopping via our app. But uh, so it was kind of like a happy serendipitous coincidence that we then started to notice that those customers that came to us and shopped via the app spent more, they returned more often, uh, they had a higher AOV, um, uh, they, yeah, much, they were just a much stickier customer. Um, and so we suddenly realized that actually our app customers have the potential to be our best most loyal customers, um, and those are the ones that we ought to treat with a bit more care and attention and love. Um, and if we had a really dedicated, tactical approach to improving our presence in the app stores, then we could really maximize and bring in some new customers into that pool. Uh, so the first job was to do, uh, working with Yodel, uh, Yodel Mobile, was to do an audit uh, of our app and our app store listings. Um, so. Uh, as you hopefully know, the B&Q brand is pretty well established in the UK. Um, and our audit kind of proved the hypothesis that most of B&Q's current app users at the time were linear users. So they were either in store and they were just using the app to kind of help finish their shopping journey, um, or they were looking directly for the brand on the app. They were, they were very much a B&Q customer already. And at the beginning of the audit, actually, what we saw that 80% of our traffic was branded but it was branded search, they were looking for us anyway. So we realized that the opportunity that we had was to leverage all of those non-linear users and get in and start to attract some uh, kind of some prospective clients, I guess. Um, so the goal then was to nurture this new stream of customers directly through mobile channels to the app. Uh, a typical user journey, as I just said, they you know they were very bricks and mortar customers. They had a sense of familiarity with the brand, um, and they were just using the app as a means to purchase product. Uh, so what we wanted to do was leverage our brand visibility and uh, for digital native customers to ensure that the app could drive new customer acquisition. That didn't change. Why didn't the slide change? Oh, okay, it's changed. Um, so, uh, so step two, we then thought about differentiating our strategy. So we had a long-term uh, and a short-term strategy. So short-term was around focusing on really relevant, uh, high-intent keywords, uh, which had really high volume um, or uh, yeah, so, no, sorry. So yes, they were, they were high quality because they were, they, we kind of knew what they were looking for and that's what we targeted. So that was the first kind of, uh, that was a short term strategy to keep doing what we were doing. And then the longer term strategy was to go after volume and it was to look at uh, customers who were lo either looking for competitor terms or for looking for like adjacent long tail keywords, um, uh, which, was a, which was more in a kind of slightly more vaguer field, less, less branded B&Q. Um, we also 
realized that we needed to differentiate the strategy between iOS and Android. So iOS, you're obviously limited with the amount of characters that you can use in terms of your keyword upload. So we had to be really, really precise and targeted with what we were going to go after. Whereas with Android, you've obviously got the option to be a bit more broad. Uh, and so we really went after volume there uh, by having lots and lots of adjacent keywords. Oh, it's um, you again. Yeah, so as part of our long and short term strategies with BNQ, we deployed the keyword optimization loop, um, which starts off with the research phase where we worked actually really closely with BNQ's SEO team in close collaboration to understand the web user's user behavior and also any successes that they've seen from SEO. Um, and we've also m tried to not rely on the ASO tools that are out there too much, but actually try and get ourselves into the mindset of the users and how they actually behave when they're trying to search for similar products and services that BNQ offers. And we also focused on seasonality as part of this. Um, once we had this sort of bank of keywords, prioritization was quite key. Um, we tried to build a core semantic a keyword bank and then build out of that long tail keywords that would be um, driving either volume or quality. Um, so we would prioritize those keywords and then we'd get them into the App Store listings and actually something that we found out is that we were working on a monthly cadence with B&Q but we, were man we managed to actually align quite closely with the product team and show them the uplifts that we were seeing and they ended up switching their cadence to fortnightly which actually helped, to us, to, it helped us to accelerate our learnings essentially. Uh, which was really good. But the, 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 the premise is that we would evaluate the keywords, we'd roll out any poor performing ones, look at our keyword bank and roll in a new set of keywords depending on the short or long term strategy. Cool. And then finally is was our step four. So as part of our strategy, we knew that conversion rate would potentially take a hit um, because historically we'd attracted B&Q linear customers. They knew what they were looking for. And once we're starting going out to a slightly more broader audience and a slightly more broader base, we need, we thought that actually, are we, we going to see our installs and our downloads drop off? So uh, what we did uh, as per uh, Rish and the team's recommendation, we worked on uh, things like screenshots, videos, um, uh, we played with the description copy, added promo text, all of which were to drive more uh, a higher conversion um, uh, to maintain that kind of high conversion through, through the listings, even though that brand traffic was going to be um, uh, potentially decreased because we were going a bit more generic. So you, I guess you want to know how we did. Um, uh, so uh, we thought we'd touch on a few of some of our headline results. Um, so first uh, is the shift away, as I, as I mentioned, the shift away from a majority brand keyword strategy to a much more blended approach. Um, so when we look at comparing year-on-year -year data, we managed to improve generic keyword installs from 11% this time last year to just over 50% um, uh, uh, at this point this year. Um, and in terms of keyword visibility, we actually managed to get some quite good results. Um, the chart here basically shows different keyword brackets. It's quite small, but green means you're ranking in the top sort of one to ten places, and then yellow in the sort of middle uh, mid 30s to 100, and then it, go, it gets lower until you get to red, which is unranked keywords. But over time, we managed to re reduce the amount of red areas, which basically means we managed to index for a lot more keywords. Um, and also, we saw improvements to some of the green and yellow areas or growth in those areas, which means we managed to surge up the rankings for a lot more keywords. Uh, but in essence, yeah, Android Store saw a massive uptick in visibility year on year and iOS as well. And so um, when it comes down to like the real facts then here, so acquisition, we saw a massive uh, surge since we've adopted this mobile first approach. Uh, so we've had a five times growth uh, in the app stores in terms of installs and downloads. We found that we've managed to massively increase the number of keywords, keywords that we were indexed for, particularly in Android. Like I said, the volume game there, but we've increased by almost 3,000 keywords in Android alone. Um, we peaked in in terms of our ranking in our category within the App Store at uh, position eight for the lifestyle category in iOS, and then uh, by we've increased our kind of position by about seven, eight points uh, in Android as well. Um, and um, 
all, all the while, we've managed to kind of maintain that conversion rate um, in terms of downloads and then subsequently in terms of the revenue that we've been able to generate through the app too. And so what's next? So our 2020 strategy for the, um, for the B&Q app is, is based kind of around three pillars. So number one is around product development. Um, how do we listen to all of those app store reviews and all, what our customers are telling us in order to develop the product and make it uh, and, and include features and benefits within the product that, uh, that they're asking for. So number, that's our number one strategy. The part of that will also to be including things like our Scan and Go, uh, which is a separate app currently. We have a separate uh, app, which was not necessarily the best idea. Um, uh, but also we're integrating the functionality. And then we're also launching, I'm not sure whether you know, but B&Q has a trade specific business as well called TradePoint. We're going to launch a TradePoint app this year uh, as well using all of the learnings from uh, the from ASO that we've done with BNQ and applying them to the trade customer. Um, we're going to a uh, second part, a second pillar of the strategy is around engagement. So what are all of the owned channel stuff that we can do to drive adoption of the app with our customers and also with our colleagues? So we're running uh, install colleague campaigns and to encourage them not only to download it and use it for themselves, but also for that to be the default way that they support customers on their in-store journeys. When customers have questions or want to order something online, they just order it for them via the app. Um, and we'll also run uh, app trading, uh, app only trading offers and exclusive deals through the app this year. Uh, and then the third thing will be obviously to continue this, our great program of App Store optimization that we've worked on with Yodel Mobile, uh, as well as we're going to start flirting with uh, ASA, which we've learned a lot about today. Um, we w I'm super interested in um, uh, the product paid product page optimization work that we could we could experiment with, but also running some ASA and some Google paid search trials uh, as well. And then lastly, what we're going to continue to do is love on each other a little bit um, <laughs> with, uh, with, the, with the relationship between B&Q and Yodel Mobile, because I think what we've what we've learned, and to, I guess to sum up, is that um, neither one of us, I guess, could have, well, you couldn't have done it, well, you didn't have an app to promote. Um, uh, but no, we couldn't have done it without each other, which sounds corny and cheesy, but it's it's true, like we, in, in being q looking after the app and giving it some love and attention is, is a bit of a side hustle for all of us. There are, there are no ASO strategists in b and There is not a dedicated mobile app team in b and And so we have to leverage the support and the expertise from our agencies. And similarly, for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the biggest sort of success for us in this partnership was the fact that you guys were quite ambitious. Um, there was uh, the goals were there, um, but because you are a traditional brick and mortar business, trying trying to mobilize effectively, um, it, it, was, it meant that the team had to figure out a different strategy to what we may have deployed otherwise. And uh, I think you guys are ambitious. You've kept us honest. Uh, you've challenged us, um, and I think that's what really helped the partnership grow. And yeah, excited for the next couple months, years. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And I think that's us. So we've got some time for questions. Who wants to go first? <laughs> for Harry. <laughs> Hello. Um, you have a screen, um, I think it was sign 203. We had like the Facebook off where you had the app and you had the banner ad on the app. Are you using AMS codes to trigger that or promos codes? So obviously, when you go into the app, you lose that person completely. So how are you, how you personalizing that journey when that? Um, are you talking about the ad and seeing the offer and then having that in the yeah, yeah, in the app? I guess you've more than one offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you then that? Look at you looking at me. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, being like brutally honest at the moment, we're not doing that. Like we're not as clever or as intelligent enough to give you that personalised experience. So the the ads and that we put in terms of paid search uh, will 
pretty much always be replicated across the journey. So we kind of go, uh, we're not, at the moment, we're not sophisticated enough with that kind of single customer view to know that you looked at that there, we're going to take you there, and it'll be the same experience as, as over here as well. Um, but what we have done recently is uh, we're, we're onboarding and going to start working with uh, an MMP partner to get that single customer view so that we can start being a bit more intelligent with those campaigns. Um, because at the moment, yeah, being perfectly honest, it's more luck than judgment. Um, but it, and it, but it's really tricky, isn't it? But you want to give that same consistent experience across all the platforms so that customers go, oh yeah, I saw that here, and I saw it here, and I saw it here. Um, there so, are there are certain MMPs that offer uh, deferred deep linking technology, so you could in effect have someone click on an ad and have a deferred deep link taking them to a particular part in the app. That replicates or resonates quite closely with the with the ad that they saw, um, but I guess that's subject to change from case to case. So, so you need to weigh that up. How did the relationship start? Did you guys approach them because you kind of identified a problem, or were they kind of like you know kind of getting in touch with you and saying like, hey, we think you maybe have that problem? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So um, it's a really nice story, actually, because um, so when we were starting to look at right, how do we develop and grow our, our mobile uh, our mobile app, and how do we start to put a bit of an emphasis and focus onto the apps? Um, we did. Uh, we looked at all of the many different things that we could have done, like including developing product or um, running an offer or something exclusive to the app. Um, and one of the one of the things that we kind of landed upon was App Store optimization because it, we figured it was a fairly uh, a fairly low cost Mick um, uh, way of um, of generating some kind of interest within the App Store listings and to start driving some uh, driving those downloads. Um, and actually, all I did was I reached out to, to Mick Rigby, who's the the MD. Uh, Yodel, and we had a great conversation, didn't we? And like you were just so generous with the information that you shared, and it was just, it wasn't a sales pitch, was it? It was like you were just giving me some advice and giving me some information. So then when it came to RFP, and we looked at, you know, we looked at a bunch of different ASO specialists, um, you know, obviously we wanted to include Yodel at mobile in the mix, uh, and, they, and they delivered in, in the RFP. So um, they were the no brainer choice for us. I love you too. Ah, no, I'll say that tenor later, yeah? OK. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, we'll be here for a couple of minutes, so you could come over and ask anything. But thank you. Thank you very much.